Namaste everyone, welcome to our next episode of English Suit and we are discussing poems. Today we are going to discuss about uh, Full Fathom 5 Thy Father Lies by William Shakespeare. So William Shakespeare is the greatest poet. Dramatist. Uh, yeah, dramatist, obviously playwright also. Okay? Yeah. Playwright of English literature. This uh, poem uh, let's first discuss about some of the unfamiliar words, if you have any. Yes. Yeah, please. Fathom. Fathom. This is the you know measurement of six feet. Fathom uh, refers to the six feet, uh, and it's nearly about two meters. Mm. Uh, so therefore, that means when we say uh, full fathom five, what does it mean? Five feet to six feet. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I like that. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. six. So, he means you say six feet. All right, I like that. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. six. So, he means you say six feet. All right, all right, yes. yes. So, what is in the die? <laughs> die, okay. T H Y die. Die, this is the you know, archaic word. Uh, English, old English. Die means your. Yeah. And what is meant by coral? Corals are some of the precious, um, you know, the stones. Okay. Uh, or I said the corals are the bones of the sea animals. Dot. What? Dot. 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 Yeah, dot. Dot means dots. Dots in English. Dots. Uh, yeah. Dot means dots. Dots. G O S. Yeah, G O S. Dot. Okay. Nymphs, sea nymphs. So, so sea nymphs are the sea creatures. Sea, uh, you know, these are some of the fantastic, or these are some of the imaginary sea uh, fairies. Sea nymphs are the fictional uh, sea creatures. Like fictional sea creatures, they are imaginary. Sea animals. And suffer sea change. So suffer sea change means uh, change by sea. That can be changed by the sea. They are changed by the sea. So this nail means K and E L L. The nail is the bell. Okay, it's a kind of uh, sound, bell sound, basically during the funeral. What is this hark? Hark means uh, uh, listen. This is also our archaic use. Har, listen. Okay. Yeah. In my fed. Fed, fed. Yeah, F A D E. Yeah, fed. Fed means to go away or something. Yeah, it's disappearing. Okay. Ooh, uh, nice. Slowly disappearing. Fed. All right, now read the poem and try to um, just uh, paraphrase the poem. You, you can start. Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs hourly ring his nail, ding dong, hark, now I hear them, ding dong bell. Uh, let's, uh, okay, paraphrase this one. First. Full fathom five thy father lies. It means uh, your, your, your father's body lies 30 feet uh, deep below the sea. Uh -huh. And then? Of his bones are coral made. Means his bones are changed into coral. Yeah, coral. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Means his eyes are changed into pearls. Uh -huh. yeah. Nothing of him that doth fade. It means that. Nothing has disappeared. Okay. Even, uh, no parts that. of his body have yes. decayed. Okay? Because after the death, right? So our body is supposed to be dead and decayed, right? Yes. But nothing had decayed. Okay? Mm -hmm. But what has happened? Suffer. But suffer change. of sea changes. That means yes. sea has changed them. Change. Okay? Yeah, yeah. But they have. It do? And they have something been changed by the sea into something, something strange, strange and rich. Something very strange, strange and, and beautiful, and rich and precious. Precious, precious. and precious. valuable. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then? Sea needs hourly ring his nail. Ding dong. 
Heart. No, I... Oh, that's them? Oh, yeah. What is happening then? Then the sea nymphs. So sea creatures. Yes, sea okay. creatures are welcoming. Uh, yeah, sea fairies. Okay. Sea fairies. Sea fairies, they are fictional fairies. They are, they are, there are supposed to be uh, fairies also inside the sea. Yes. So, like, so sea fairies are ringing the bell, the bell okay. every hour. They are welcoming, welcoming the death. They are glorifying the death of your father. So who says this one? Ariel's Ariel. Ariel. Now, okay, now let's go to the you know background of this poem, alright? So actually this song is a song by Ariel. 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 The Spirit Ariel. Ariel. Okay. This song is sung by Spirit Ariel to the Prince Ferdinand. of Naples. Ferdinand. 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 The Prince of Naples, okay? Who mistakenly thinks that his father, father is drowned. Is drowned. Well, so now there is a historical background. Actually, this uh, song, you know, this poem is brought by Shakespeare's one of the you know great Play. uh, plays, The Tempest. Tempest. Act one, scene two. In Act one, scene two, uh, he has uh, written this song. The spirit alien sings this song. To Ferdinand, the prince of Naples, who mistakenly thinks that his, his father is drowned. drowned. So what happened is in the tempest actually, this storm there, okay, so um, uh, Ferdinand mistakenly thinks that his father is drawn, 30 feet drawn into the sea. Actually it was created by, created by Prospero. Once he was king, uh, he was Duke of Milan, all right, and he has been banished by his brother, all right, and uh, he is living in an island with his daughter Mirinda. He has been banished with his daughter Mirinda, and uh, actually this Prospero in that island studied very much. He learned magic also, and through his magical power, or he captured many animals of that creatures of the island okay including the aerial cannibals so he uh, overpowered them okay and he ordered Ariel to sing this song actually all right so what happened is that okay uh, actually through his magic he created the storm in the sea uh, what does the poem says in the beginning the spirit Ariel sings this song to Ferdinand, Prince of Naples, mm. who mistakenly, who mistakenly thinks, thinks his father, father is drowned. 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 Who mistake say again? Who mistakenly who thinks? Mistakenly thinks his father is drowned. So what is there? Do you have any idea why he mistakenly thinks his father is drowned? No idea. Okay, so actually there is a reference again okay, the. Uh, in the tempest, okay. So this storm, uh, okay, uh, this Prospero creates the storm in the sea. While the Ferdinand, Antonio, okay, his father, and his brother, and others were, some of them were traveling, okay, in the sea. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, this Prospero creates the storm. Prospero means. Yeah, Prospero is. Uh, a person okay, who is the main character of this tempest mm -hmm. and actually he was once the Duke of Milan that means he was the highest person in Milan Milan is country Milan, yeah he stayed during that time mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah it's, a, it's like country of course okay. and then you know so then he had been uh, banished by his brother mm -hmm. with his daughter Mirinda He's there with his daughter Melinda, okay, and therefore he created a storm, okay, and after creating storm, it was magical, and therefore uh, he uh, threw, he threw Ferdinand in one side of the sea, okay, and he threw other people in another side of the sea, right, so that is the situation, and now uh, Ferdinand uh, believes that, believes that his father and other People who are traveling with him are dead because no one is there with him. Mm -hmm. right? So it, it was actually created by Prospero, Prospero. as a uh, process of revenge, actually. Mm -hmm. 
And therefore, right. when Ferdinand was there, uh, there at one side of the sea, then this Prospero Oros um, uh, spirit to sing the song and bring the Ferdinand near them. And actually, Ferdinand is brought near to Mirinda. And finally, the uh, you know the situation is Mirinda and Ferdinand fall in love. All right. So that's kind of situation is created here. So this song is in this context. But, but actually Ferdinand's father is not dead. Yeah, not dead. His no. father, no one is dead. He's thrown away. Thrown to another part of the sea. Maybe oh. by, by, the, by the, you know, super oh. magical power of Prospero. Prospero. And yeah. Ariel sings this song for sympathy. Uh, no, Ariel sings this song to uh, lead him, like a lead Ferdinand, towards Mirinda. Oh. Right? Oh! All right? So that's yeah. what is the situation, that, that is the context of uh, this one. All right? All right? And therefore, therefore now Ariel is just telling uh, him, all right? Therefore Ariel is telling him, okay, your father is not dead because everything of him have been changed into something, something valuable, precious, precious again, okay? strange, okay? The sea had changed them into something which is special. And therefore your father is just lying 30 feet deep below the sea. His bones have been changed into? Coral. Coral. Eyes have been changed into pearls. And nothing has been dead and decayed. decayed. All right? But they have changed into something rich and valuable. And, and uh, the sea nymphs are singing the, uh, ringing the bell yes. every hour uh, to glorify the death of your father. Yes. So in this way, that is glorified, glorified in the poem. So what is the idea of this poem then? Death is not the end of the life. Yeah, of course. It also means that death is not the end of the life. life. But it is the beginning of the new world. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it might you... be like that. It's the beginning of the new world. So what is the main theme of this poem? So uh, the main idea of this poem we can say is uh, that men are we all are the part of nature. Yeah. Okay? And therefore nature changes us. Okay? Mm -hmm. Even after the death, nature changes us into something strange, something valuable. Yeah. Okay? So nature changes us into another natural objects. Okay? That is the idea. Yeah, yeah. So as you said, that uh, death is not the end of life. Yeah. Okay, that means we, uh, it, is, it is the only transformation. It is the process of transformation, okay? And therefore, death has been glorified in the poem. That is the main idea, and main questions uh, is like that. Of how is death is glorified? Is death is meaningful? Is death is meaningful, or is death is glorified in this poem? Okay? Mm. Everything is like that. Is death meaningful? Of course. Why is it meaningful? How is it meaningful? It's meaningful because it changes into something strange, something so valuable, valuable, something precious thing. <laughs> if, even, if, if, even if it changes into something strange and valuable, then it's meaningful, meaningful. right? Yeah. If, it, if it is decayed, okay, used to nothingness, uselessness, then it is not meaningful. Otherwise, it's meaningful. Yes. All right? how, is it how the death is glorified in the poem? <laughs> death is glorified. How is the death glorified in the poem? By, by winning the death bell, bell every hour by sea nymphs. Okay, so sea nymphs okay, glorifies the death by ringing the bell, bell. day and dawn. Ding dong. So that means ringing the uh, bell is something like praising, okay, saying some good things about the death, okay, yeah. all right? Okay, that's all. All right, yeah. What do you want to ask in this poem, Alice? Nothing. It's very simple. Alright, so what is onomatopoeia? Onomatopoeia is ding dong. Yeah. Ding dong is onomatopoeia. So onomatopoeia are the words, okay, which describe the things that they want to 
say us. So what is alliteration mean? Alliteration is the repetition of the consonant sounds. Okay? Uh, for example, this poem is very much alliterated. Or this poem is very uh, much rich in alliteration. Mm -hmm. So there is repetition of the consonant, consonant sounds. sounds. Basically the beginning. For example, full fathom phi thy father. So which, which sound is repeated here? F. Fa sound. Okay? Yeah. Fa, fa. No, we don't say F. Fa sound is repeated. Pi. Similarly, Pi. other 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 repeated sounds are yeah, also ding, ding dong, dong is also da sound is repeated. Da. What else? Those that that okay? This okay? This sound. Oh. Those that. 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 Okay. This sound is a da sound. Da. So what what else other? Suffer, see, okay, see change, Strings. something, uh, reaching, strength, okay. So saw so, sound is repeated. See, yeah. Okay, see needs, okay. See. So it's very much rich, okay. okay. It is uh, very much rich in saw so sounds. So, okay. And assonance means? Assonance. Assonance yes. is a repetition of the vowel sound. In the words, for example, yeah, eyes. five, okay, die, lies, eyes. okay, eyes. eyes. So in this way, in this point, we can see the e sound, e sound, a e sound, okay, a sound, all right, o sound repeated in the poem. So in this way. Um, uh, the poem is very much alliterative, okay, full of alliteration and assonance. These are some of the very important elements of poetry. So, after reading this poem, what do you understand? What do you say about this? Uh, by reading this poem, we can say that man, who mm. is the nature, part of the nature, mm. transforms into, into another natural object. object. Yeah, so uh, man itself is a part of nature. Okay? So therefore, it transforms into something other natural okay. object after the death. Okay. That might be the main, main, main thing. The idea of this poem. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. What else? As you said, uh, death is not the end so of the life. Death is not the end of life. life. It's the Perhaps. This is the beginning, beginning of, of the new life. New life. Yes. Okay. So, do you believe in new life? Yes, of course. Yeah. Huh? Yes. So, uh, how do you believe? Mm, because after the death, yeah. it's not simply death. <laughs> <laughs> so, after, after death, you believe that you'll become something, something else. Something else. Yeah, reincarnation. No, no, so, no. So, sometimes, yes, we talk about the reincarnation. reincarnation right? yeah. That means our soul. So, uh, so after the death, our physical body may decay, yeah, decay, yeah. decay yeah. but our soul does not does die. It. Okay, yes. so uh, it will always remember. It, is, it will be always alive, moving around the world, perhaps. Okay? Yes. So anyway, um, uh, the you know there is a belief. Okay, In all religions also believe uh, after life. Okay? Believe. The life after death. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So one word, ding dong. What kind of word is this ding dong? Sound of bell. Sound of a bell. No, no. What what is this uh, typical word for this? What kind of words? Uh, onomatopoeia. Onom onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia uh, is the word yeah. which describes the sound of something. Ding dong. Okay. Like. Uh, like uh, cow crying, mm. 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 Right. Mm. and cat crying, mm. 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 okay, <laughs> ba ba, okay. <laughs> so these are all some of the onomatopoeia, right? yes. onomatopoeia. So alliteration. Alliteration means a set of consonant sounds. Full time. Re re repetition of consonant, consonant sounds. sounds. Consonant sounds. Full yeah. fat on five. So what uh, consonant sounds are repeated here? Full, full fat on five. Father. 
What consonant sounds? Fa sounds, da sounds, so sounds, da. Okay. So these are the sounds that are repeated here. Okay. Here. So yeah. what are the alliterations? Uh, what alli what alliterative words are here? Uh, there are many sounds. Uh, yeah, wow. Well, 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 okay, so alliteration means? Repetition of the consonant sounds. Basically, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, what uh, consonant sounds are repeated here? Fa, Fa, Da, Da, Sa, Da, Da. Da, okay. So, these are repeated. Yeah. And assonants? The repetition of vowel sounds. sounds. They are? Lies, eyes, yeah. yeah. ah, sound, ah, e sound, o, o sound. So, okay, so all like this. Yes. So, what uh, changes? What changes does his father's body undergo? Eyes are changed into coral. Eyes are changed into pearls. And then, mm. what else? And everything Every has. Every part of his body has changed. Uh, something valuable in that expresses friends. Actually, you know, C itself is very, very um, mysterious. Yeah. C has a lot of things. Okay. Uh, C has so many things inside okay, that we cannot imagine. Yeah. So yeah. actually, C itself is the treasure of the world. Yeah. Okay? Mystery. Full of mysterious. Yeah. Therefore, uh, C changes everything into something mysterious. mysterious. Yes. So C uh, has gone C change means C has changed in seven inch or something in this sense. Alright, that's all. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Please do like, comment and share among your friends, family and all the people nearby. Please don't forget to subscribe our interactive, informative, interesting and resourceful videos. Please subscribe our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Thank you for watching the videos of English World. Traveling to the Dark is written by Anne Lila and Sibisa Barry. Yesterday, It also means that that is not the end of not the life. life. But it is the beginning of the new world. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It oh, might yeah. be like that. It's the beginning of the new world. Yeah. Yeah, then? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, come on. So what is the main theme of this poem? So actually the main idea we can um, <laughs> Full Fathom 5 Thy Father Lies by William Shakespeare, extracted from Tempest, Act 1, Scene 2. And this is the supplementary part for the previous discussion. William Shakespeare is known as the father of English literature. He is one of the greatest poets and he is the uh, greatest playwright of English literature. And he has written many poems as well as 154 sonnets and 37 different kinds of plays. Let's paraphrase this poem. Full fathom five thy father lies means your father lies 30 feet below the sea. Your fathom means six feet. So six feet into five is so 30 feet okay, below the sea. 
Of his bones are coral made, so his bones have been changed into coral. Pearls are the precious stones. Those are pearls that were his eyes, so the eyes have been changed into pearls. Nothing of him that doth fade, means nothing of the father's body have been decayed. Okay, so no, nothing of his uh, any part okay have fed means decayed. Okay, doth means doth. Okay. The so uh, duds goes to a sea change. Parts have parts have not been decayed. But duds of a sea change, but duds goes to a sea change. Sea has changed them. Okay. Into something rich and it stands into something rich and valuable thing. Sea names are wearing his nail. Sea spirits, sea areas, okay, sea fairies, sea creatures are ringing the bell ding dong every hour. They are glorifying the death, okay. Uh, they are glorifying the death of your father, okay, by ringing the ding dong. Hark, now I hear them ding a dong bell. Listen, I can hear the bell now also. So, context of the song, it's very important, okay? Um, this poem occurs in Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, Act 1, Scene 2. The spirit Ariel sings this song to Ferdinand, the prince of Nepal. So, he mistakenly thinks his father is drowned because of sea storm. This system was actually created by the magic of Prospero, once the Duke of Milan, now Melinda's father, who had been banished by his brother along with his daughter Melinda. So, in order to take the revenge, okay, since he has been banished by his brother, okay, so therefore, in order to take the revenge, who was traveling with, uh, uh, traveling with this Ferdinand, okay, Prince of Naples, and his father, okay, and other people, and at that time, the time, Prospero, the main character of the Tempest drama, created the storm system with his magical power because he was practicing various supernatural okay, power when he was banished in the island. So let's see more uh, background of the film. Prospero has overpowered Ariel and other creatures. Ariel is commanded to guide Ferdinand to us, daughter Merinda, all right? And the whole situation is a kind of revenge where Ferdinand and Merinda finally get married because of the super magical power Merinda's father created his tomb where Ferdinand, along with his father and others, were traveling. They stormed through them in different source, not dead, where Ferdinand thinks that his father and others are dead so Ariel comes to guide for in with his son okay therefore the um, when Prospero created uh, he has okay, controlled a lot of things of the island okay and one of them is Ariel and therefore Ariel is commanded to sing this song to guide uh, Ferdinand okay to bring Ferdinand to us then and to us his daughter actually and so the uh, whole situation is a kind of revenge, all right? And therefore, uh, what happens is uh, when he created this storm, uh, this storm through different peoples, okay, traveling there, his father, Ferdinand's father, and his brother, and other people to the different parts of the different areas of the sea, okay? And therefore, now Ferdinand thought that his father is dead. He only himself is alive, and therefore, uh, when he was thinking like that at that time, Ariel sing this song. Basically, no one is there, okay? They are thrown to different parts of the island. So, uh, therefore, he says here, he sings the song about the death of the Ferdinand's father, according to him. The Ariel says, Ferdinand's father lies 30 feet below the surface of the sea. Ferdinand is very worried about the death of his father, therefore giving him the sympathy Ariel says that his father has got quite meaningful death, his body is not decayed, every part of the body has been changed into something beautiful, valuable and strength, 
His eyes are transformed into pearls and bones are turned into corals. The sea nymphs welcome his death by ringing the death bell, ding a dong, every hour. Okay, so this can be the it can be used as the summary of the poem too. So some of the ideas we can see here are uh, the main idea we can find in the poem is that the man who is the part of the nature transforms into other natural objects after death. Okay, so death, you know, so death is not the end of the life. Okay, there's life after death. Okay. So human being or any living things change changes into something else, of course, okay. So our body transforms into something else, and um, the life there's life after death. On the basis of vice and virtues of the human beings, they are taken to the hell or heaven. Okay, this is belief of different kinds of religions too, all right. And of course, uh, our physical body dies, but um, our soul lives forever. So that signifies okay, that there is life after death. The death has been glorified by ringing the death bell again, okay, ding dong, every hour. The death has been made very meaningful in this poem by saying that the parts of the body, that the parts of the body have been changed into something rich and strange. Okay? And these parts of the body, which is okay, to be a dead and decay, which is supposed to be dead and decay, uh, giving rise to nothing, but they have been changed into something rich and strange. Okay? These are some of the ideas, themes, masses of the poem. So, main questions in the poem is, uh, all right, uh, how is the death glorified in the poem? Is the death meaningful? Okay. And do you believe in life after death? Okay. What happens to um, the Ferdinand's father's body? Okay. So different things. Same thing. So, so basic thing is, uh, of course, death. Death. Death has been glorified in the poem. Death is meaningful in the poem because different parts of body have been changed, different uh, different things, valuable things like the eye changes into pearls, bone changes into corals, so everything becomes something rich and valuable. Yeah, right. Right. Death is significant. The death is quite the death is quite significant in the poem, right? Because death after the death uh, they are not dead and decayed, but changed into something rich and valuable, all right? And, uh, and death has been glorified more by ringing the death bell by the sea nymphs, all right? So in this way, um, any kind of questions in this poem can be uh, written by using these ideas and summaries. Thank you for being touched and wait for the next episode.